Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, Warren Kananiga, and you're watching My Life Icons. This is our Valentine's Day episode. Yes, February 14 it is. And it goes without saying that my guest for today is definitely special. To encapsulate, he is an asset and a luminary, for me, a luminary in the education industry. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Rex Ibarle. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Warren. Good Hello. day. Good day, it's, everyone. Yes, it's Valentine's Day. How are you today? <laughs> Warren, I'm great. I'm great. I mean, more than ever, I'd say. Um, it's been a challenging 2020, right? And then we have just welcomed 2021. I mean, I have just welcomed 2021 with a considerable amount of positivity and good vibes. And then looking forward to a wonderful and better 2021. Wonderful and better new year, basically. I'm great. I'm doing great. How about you? <laughs> I am excited <laughs> and I'm so happy because we're finally doing this. And early year, I've also received the good news from mm -hmm. one of my future guests. And you know that, but it's just... Yes, yes, definitely. <laughs> It cannot be disclosed yet at this time. <laughs> this time. Um, it will be a surprise. <laughs> yes, definitely. For our viewers, Sir Rex, I would like mm -hmm. to um, share to them that the reason why we got to know each other is because of our participation in one of the regional seminars at the Contact La Cebu City. So at that time, you were, that was the first time I saw you. You oh, okay. presented Cebu City Division in the delivery mm -hmm. the reflection for that seminar, and I was the one for Toledo City. And I believe oh, okay. that's the first time that we saw each other. Yes, <laughs> indeed. I couldn't even remember that right now, I mean, vividly. I couldn't even remember um what particular training was that. Yeah. But then, yes, I definitely remembered you because you were awesome on stage. You were definitely amazing. And that was also the time, I tell you, <laughs> that was also the time when I asked my good, a good friend of mine, um, Cheryl Arqueza, who you are, if she knows you, she knows something about you. Because really, I was in awe. I was really amazed. <laughs> And I was also um, speechless while listening to you. And oh, that's God. why also I asked Mom Cheryl. It was actually Mom, Sh Mom Sh Ramos. Hi, Mom Cheryl, um. if you're watching right now. Hi, Shai. <laughs> Mom Che is actually our common fan. Um, mm -hmm. Mom Che, as a colleague of mine, and in your case, uh, a classmate. In, in yeah, yeah, she was my classmate way back in college. Okay. Yes. Mm -mm. Having recalled those uh, moments, I'd like to ask mm -hmm. you what was your yes. initial reaction when I chatted you in, in, as, 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 as a way of inviting you to guest in my vlog? <laughs> Well, basically, I was in shock. Yeah, that was the initial reaction. I was in shock and then I was in awe. I questioned myself or asked myself, um, do I deserve this? Do I deserve this spot? Do I deserve this interview? I mean, what's so special about me? Because, um, yes, you've actually just mentioned, made mention of this one earlier that we really haven't talked yet. I mean, personally, um, I just saw you from afar and that was exactly the same thing, you know, same experience in your case. This is actually the very first time that, I mean, although virtually we've been talking to each other, um, <laughs> although I was a little bit afraid, but then and nervous at the same time, but I'm really, really happy that this day has finally come i'm so happy about this interview i'm so looking forward to whatever we are going to talk about today <laughs> and i'm also ecstatic and one of the reasons why you really deserve an episode is because <laughs> you are one of my younger role models um, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, i mean what what is the um what is the greatest influence or what factor has mm -hmm. been major bearing on your decision to choose English as your field of specialization 
Mm, all right. Wonderful question that is. <laughs> all right. Basically, when um, I think the turning point was that when I was in elementary, there was one English teacher. I had one English teacher actually told me that I have to pursue a career in college or a course in college that has something to do with English because I think at that time she already saw a little bit of um potential in me. And then I told her that I'd like to become a journalist someday. I told her I'd like to um be going to that path, but. Then when I was in high school, um, my English teacher had the biggest influence over me in terms of being an educator, and that was uh, when I was in second year high school. That was the time when I, I told myself that I'd like to become an educator. And then she was also my class advisor and an English teacher for that matter. And then I really look up to her, Mom Raniza Romero at that time, uh, Ragasaho now Romero. She's actually my English um, teacher when I was in high school at Cebu. Um, is it okay if, if I make mention of yes. a school, yes. <laughs> Cebu Institute of Technology at that time? So she was one of the best mentors that I've, I have had. So I really look up to her and I told myself that I'd like to be someone like her. And yes, definitely I am an English teacher right now. I'm so thankful, really, really thankful with everything that she has actually taught me. Yeah. And it feels so great to know that we're both normal lights. You know, mm-hmm, yes. <laughs> that's something that really connects us. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And from from your achievements that I have reviewed and that I have known from different sources, I can really see <laughs> that campus journalism is one of the dimensions of of our subject. Mm-hmm, really, mm-hmm. um, what are some of your memorable achievements as a campus mm-hmm. journalism coach? Mm-hmm. For All right. Campus? Mm, okay, in science high school. Well, um, when I started in science high school, I already got myself into training, I would have to say. You know, I was like a, a sort of a trainee um, in terms of campus journalism, um, advising, or school paper advising. Uh, but then it was um, only in 2016 that I became a school paper advisor. And then from then on, everything has been very memorable, Warren, I tell you. I mean, every time we do um, campus journalism activities, Every time we do training, every time I'm with my students, um, I think all those times, basically, those are very memorable to me. But then, um, if I'm going to name one achievement that I have had, that was um, during the National Schools Press Con in Dumaguete City. Um, I don't know if I remember myself to right. Was that like 2018 or 2019, NSPC? So, um that was that has been by far the highest you know spot in terms of recognition that we have had in terms of um rate tv and tv broadcasting mm-hmm. so we got third overall in tv broadcasting and we've got um basically numerous special awards by then that was also one of the turning points but prior uh, prior to that also um it was my first time to be a school paper advisor and first time being a coach in TV broadcasting in Pagadian City and SPC in Pagadian City and we won actually at that time so basically every year has been it's, it's always memorable to me every year and I'm so happy I'm glad that you know I have I have been given a chance to work with such talented um, students that I have had in Cebu City National Science High School and that every year no, not really to boast or to brag, but um, every year we always give honor to um, our school and to Cebu City Division and to Region 7, basically in terms of winning um, special awards or a major award in terms of TV broadcasting. So, yes, all of those have been really, really special and memorable. <laughs> you have been o- overachieving, really, and congratulations. And- no, not exactly. <laughs> I should say that, and, and, and I think that's also one of the reasons why you are a sought after speaker. There were a few mm. people who are who were also uh, CNU alumni that I have spoken with, mm-hmm. and they learned that we are friends. They mm-hmm. told me that you know what, um, Rex Barley is definitely a, a positive influence, and he can definitely oh give you lots of tips and, <laughs> because he is. A, how do you call this? For an in demand resource speaker in region no. seven. I, oh my. <laughs> I don't think so. Seven. I don't know. We have okay. equally, I mean, great speakers as well in region seven, and you're one of those, basically. <laughs> <laughs> what were what were some of your uh, most memorable 
speaking engagements or how do you call this one of your or a few of your memorable performances as a performances <laughs> performances <laughs> you, we label that and we call that as a performance indeed yeah it should be a performance yes. <laughs> well um i think to name a few i have been um invited as a speaker um it was actually during an international um exchange program um that was in thailand and then i spoke in front of um the english teach and not, not only the english teachers but um the faculty members of the particular school so that was damrong damrong ratsongkro school in thailand and yeah i talked about english as a subject and you know communication and basically um how teachers should be able to communicate um with their students most especially in terms of our subject english so i think that was one of the most memorable because i had like international audience and um, basically here in the philippines in cebu Um, I have had speaking engagement, of course, you know, with regards to when we all started with the new curriculum, when we had um, the new, new curriculum, basically, I was one of those um, invited earlier to speak in front of teachers. And almost always, that's really a rewarding um, experience for me to be able to impart, you know, to our teachers, to in my co English teachers, basically, things that I have experienced, things that I have, so that, you know, it will make them better teachers as well. And it will always be a learning experience at the same time, a give and take experience, basically. So I think um, number one would have to be that experience in Thailand. And then number two would be the usual speaking engagement invitations that I get in our division in our region and in the national level at the same time i'm also very blessed warren you know to have been given um this <laughs> this goal i would have to say you know i mean this confidence basically to, to, to speak in front of people and and the best thing about that is the sharing of experiences sharing of the best experiences that we have had so that you know we also tend to influence others in a good way I'm curious to know, Sir Rex, if yeah. you always say yes to a speaking engagement or a word Was there ever a time that I said no? no. <laughs> yeah, what's the reason why you said no? Uh, but you don't have to be very specific, of course. Yeah. Um, if my memory serves me right, Warren, I haven't really said no to any speaking <laughs> engagement at all. Yes, indeed. I always because I always see that as an opportunity and as an opportunity to share, an opportunity to learn at the same time. Every time I I speak in front of an audience, I always consider. I, I mean, I always tell myself that I'll be learning so much today. I will not only be imparting what I have, but I'll also be learning at the same time from my audience, from those I speak with. Um, may that be about um, academics or educate specifically about English, about our subject, you know, talking about our subject and strategies and things like that. Or may that be just any casual um, speaking engagement. I always say yes because I believe, again, as I've said, that it will always be a learning experience for me, and it always be a best ex the best experience there is every time I speak in front of an audience. Although there, um, I still feel nervous, and people wouldn't believe me when I say so when I, when I tell them that <laughs> really I, I I will I really feel nervous, you know, at, at the onset of the speaking engagement. But um, all throughout. You know, as I, as I start speaking and I see that, you know, in the eyes of my audience that they're also quite engaged, that actually gives me a lot of confidence, basically. So, yes, I will have to continue doing that for as long as I can. <laughs> yeah, that's right. My next question, Sir Rex, is mm. related to the first time we saw each other. When you were actually delivering the reflection, if you can still remember, we need to deliver the message within one minute. So your yes. should be forceful and substantial at all. Yeah, should be impactful, basically. Exactly. <laughs> that was the challenge. And while you were delivering, <clears throat> I, I, I actually told myself that, you know what, this educator really demands <laughs> attention. Your aria really demands attention. And and so I, I couldn't really tell. I couldn't really detect <laughs> that there's nervous attention. But I know, I know that mm -hmm. seconds or minutes before we start. Yeah, we always feel nervous. I mean, yes, yeah, yes. exactly. Now, um, let's talk about the preparation phase of every speaking mm -mm. engagement. What do you think is the most difficult part <clears throat> of the preparation stage? Or what do you consider a secret? Or what do you consider the best way in, in preparing mm -hmm. a speaking engagement? 
um, I wouldn't think of this as um, a secret or basically or as a main ingredient. I, I think this is quite common. But then, as always, before I speak in front of a crowd, um, in front of an audience, I always see to it that I am ready. I am physically ready. I am emotionally and psychologically and intellectually ready. Warren. I mean, I do my homework, basically. I, I get to know who my audience is. No? I get to know who, who these people are so that I would be able to know where to actually, um, for lack of a better term, where to attack, you know, these guys, uh, my audience. Yes, or my audience, basically. So I should know who my audience is. I should know these people and I should be very well um um, very well informed at the same time of the topic you know um, if I'm not that quite familiar with the topic as I've said I always do my homework um, at some point I, you know I, I try to create a script but then I tell you the moment I start speaking I said whenever I still have my script with me I do away with it I, I forget everything about the script because um, I can already see that the, that, that the audience are already very much engaged and things like that but then yes I really do prepare I do my homework I study a lot um, I choose maybe the best kinds of vocabulary perhaps to make good use in, in my speech in my speaking engagement and then I always see to it that I inject um, jokes wholesome jokes for that matter because that will make them feel at ease and feel good at the same time and to you know to set the mood basically I also do that in my classes. I also do that in my classes. I mean, I usually tell jokes to my students. Even right now when we're doing um, online classes, at times I tell jokes to my students. That is basically to ease the tension and the level, level of seriousness at the same time. I think that's, that's also quite important. That's basically an imp important one. Correct. From what you have said, you know what? I realized that you have really enhanced your mental dimension so well. And <laughs> there was a point there was a point when I really considered you to be an embodiment of self-love and self-care because you have <laughs> lost so much weight. You know what? Wow, I've thank been, you. I've been battling weight management for how many years now and it's so hard to fight the genes because we don't have the skinny genes, you know. But in your case, you have really lost so much weight and that is so <laughs> inspired. Not that it matters. You know, mm -hmm. what, what, you know, for me, it's still the inner beauty, which is important. Yes. But congratulations for that achievement. Thank uh, you. Why Thank you. Think, <laughs> why do you think you really needed to really work so hard, you know, to somehow lose those <laughs> amount of time? Yeah, indeed. That I have had for so many years. I tell you, Warren, I have to be very honest with you. I've been, um, I would say I've been obese, I mean, all my life. There was only one point that I remember that I was actually um, thin, not really scrawny kind of thin but then I was thin that was when I was like five years old or six years old and then after that um, I was already really you know um, obese I would have to say it was really you know one of the fat boys in school but then um, the turning point was that was last um, January 2020 Warren um, after, that was after a day after my birthday I told myself that there should be change I mean um, it not it is really not about you know, um, looking good on the outside, but it's more in feeling good in the inside. I mean, I told myself I have to be healthy because, um, as you know, when we age, basically we feel <laughs> different things, you know, in our yeah. bodies and things that we should be feeling, basically. And then, um, in terms of genes, no, I would have to say, in, in my father's side, mother's side, they, there have been a lot of, um, problems in terms of health so i i told myself i have to do that change it was not drastic it was um gradual i would have to say um it took me some time to be able to be in the shape where i am now and i'm really really happy basically i am as they say um malayo pa pero malayo na that's what actually they say i, I mean i also ag agree with that um Uh, I think it's more on feeling good about myself and being healthy at the same time. It's a lifestyle change, basically. But still, I am very much happy with who I am now. And I was also even happy with who I was before. So what was your fitness and diet uh, regimen? <laughs> regimen, no. <laughs> I'll be sharing my, my, my experience. Um, 
to be honest there have been a lot of people who's been asking me about that because as always when whenever they see pictures of me on facebook they always tell me that they're amazed and they're shocked with how i was able to lose um the weight but wow. then i always t- I, I, yeah i always tell them that it takes a lot of courage it takes a lot of um courage and commitment at the same time i am a rice eater i would have to tell you Warren. i'm a rice eater um all my life i've always loved eating rice but that was actually the first thing that i remember from my diet um to be honest i haven't eaten rice since january 2020 but there was a time when i was um i was forced to do so that was during the nspc in togigarao in march last march because i had no choice at that but right after that um i really haven't eaten rice and then more in vegetables and constant exercise i think you've seen a few of my posts over facebook you know when 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 i do jogging early morning jog and aerobics and things like that that's something that i really added into my routine something that i never haven't done ever before but then um i saw the effect i saw the positive effects and so i told myself i will have to continue with this one because i will not only feel good about myself i will not only look good for the better but i know that i'll be inspiring others you know who are also struggling in terms of their weight and things like that but then again um it doesn't matter i will have to tell everyone your audience most especially that it doesn't really matter if you're big or if you're the, the plus size you know uh, what matters most will always be our heart you know the pure uh, the purity that we have in our heart basically but then it's also good to also take care of yourself and what better way no, than to engage into exercise and to lifestyle change basically so yes i have sacrificed so much but then i've i've been seeing good results and i'm happy with this yeah, so of, of course we discipline ourselves because we, we, we love mm. ourselves and yes, sometimes because of also because of also love, we sometimes always <laughs> point ourselves. So how are your cheat days like? <laughs> Ah, okay. <laughs> well, um, during, uh, I do cheat days some um, maybe once in two weeks, basically. Yeah, they say it should be like once a week, but then I do that once in two weeks. I eat pizza. I mean... <laughs> Um, I don't really eat eat pizza in a, on a normal day, but then whenever I eat pizza, I would have to take in three slices or sometimes even four slices. That's my cheat day. Yeah, yeah. But the biggest sacrifice, Warren, that I have had is not drinking soda or soft drinks. I I tell you, I never had a taste of Coke or any soda or soft drinks since January twenty twenty. I mean, yes, that's it. Yeah, wow. basically my mom would tell me sometimes you know you just have to sip in or just a little but then i always tell myself no i wouldn't go into that i have already started with this journey you know i've already started with this one i will have to continue uh, during cheat days i eat pizza uh, i think that's it and then i eat my favorite of course um spaghetti and noodles noodle dishes basically so those are my personal favorites but other than that i i really take control because i always tell myself i have gone a long way i would never want to you know go back to being obese again i have to keep myself healthy if i'm not mistaken sir rex um yes, at yes. this point in your life carbohydrate mm-hmm. laden food items have become a guilty pleasure already yes 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 <laughs> yes correct <laughs> <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Sometimes there, you know, there are days when you really want to grab one, but then uh, I always remind myself, yeah, control. I should control myself. Cheat day will come and I will have to grab a bite during cheat days, but not this day, not today. <laughs> I always tell myself that. I just I just thought, uh, you know, I did not prepare this question, but while well, you're mm-hmm. sharing your story, I'm wondering if you followed your fitness and diet regimen from something already established by experts or, or it's something mm-hmm. you have a structure for yourself based on your stock knowledge uh, no 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 basically i've seen this over um facebook i have to be honest oh. with, with with everyone it's called lcif low um yeah low carb intermittent fasting um i started with low carb you know uh, doing away with rice with pasta with bread you know the the usual favorites, <laughs> the usual favorites, basically with soft drinks and all with cake and ice cream. Yes, I really haven't eaten that much of those that I have actually made mention. So I follow that, but it's called like dirty LCIF, not really a strict one because I told myself I do that. I'll do this gradually, no. Um, but for the intermittent fasting, I just started that one last. Um, it's basically on and off. 
right after the National Schools Press Conference, um, I started with the um, intermittent fasting. But then sometimes, you know, I, I tell myself, God, I, I don't think I can continue this one. And then the next week, I'll go back, you know, to my usual routine. But still, it's low carb, uh, low carb diet, basically. I think it, it does help. And, you know, there's actually a community of that on Facebook. And I always find... Um, stories you know stories that these people tell us and sh that these people people actually share with us their journeys their fitness journeys and then i always look up to them and tell and tell myself that one day i'll get to where they are at, at that particular moment so yes it is a journey and it will still be a journey in my case hopefully i'd still be able to lose to uh, lose some weight but then my mom told me that um i already look okay now with my weight and then yes basically but still i think it will be a continuous journey for me mm. it will be a lifestyle now it will be my lifestyle sometimes i cheat days yes but then self-control self-control that is i always remind myself but then again you're doing it for yourself not for other people yes indeed yes 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 okay. first of all i'm doing this one myself for, for for my health basically i think doing it for other people for other people to see that good in me physically that would be secondary but first and foremost i'm doing this for myself to, f to be healthy and to feel healthy Thank you for sharing a lot of useful information today. Before <laughs> I say goodbye and for you yes. to, give, to give you time to enjoy the Valentine's Day, um, <laughs> how are you going to celebrate Valentine's Day? Well, I, I would have to celebrate it with my mom. Yes, I'm with my mom right here. And then, yeah, I wouldn't say there will always be a special day, you know, I mean, just. Although there will be nothing fancy, I, will be, I wouldn't be doing anything really fancy on that day. I mean, I wouldn't be able to go out because of the quarantine protocols. And then my mom is a senior, uh, has already dual citizenship, Filipino and a senior citizen at the same time. <laughs> so we'd be very, very careful, you know, in, in terms of going out and things like that. So I'll just have, I think we'll just have to um, order something. And then we'll just have to celebrate it right here at the comfort of our own home. We just we need to be very safe and we need to follow community protocols this time. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. Um, so, Rex, thank you very much for your yes. time. And this will not be your last guesting. Soon, if we see each other <laughs> physically, we'll definitely yes. have a, how do you call this? We will be visiting like a restaurant and we'll try mm. food. I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. Hopefully, I'll also be able to visit Toledo, Warren. Hopefully, soon, soon, I'll be able to do soon. that. Yeah. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of Valentine's Day. Bye. Yes, yes, yes. Bye. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Okay.